Hello Universal Class, I'm Jana Strohmeyer. In the following few minutes, I will show you a short part of a lecture. I hope you will enjoy the next three minutes and also maybe learn something new. So let's start. Some of the important reactions of benzene and its remarkable stability were discussed in the previous chapter. Let's now look at how we named the derivatives of benzene. Well, we mentioned that the most characteristic reaction of benzene is substitution reaction. If we have one of the hydrogens replaced by another atom, or it can also be a group of atoms, we end up with mono-substituted benzene. A very common substitution reaction is halogenation. If we attach chlorine to the benzene molecule, we end up with chlorobenzene. The reaction with bromine would give us bromobenzene. We could also have a nitro group attached. Let's attach a nitro group. Nitro group, here we go. And the molecule is nitrobenzene. So how did we name them? Well, in this case, it is pretty straightforward, and many of such compounds are luckily named like this. We simply name them by adding the prefix of the substituent to the word benzene. Prefix plus benzene. Our molecules have the prefixes chloro, bromo, And nitro plus benzene give chlorobenzene, bromobenzene, and nitrobenzene. All hydrogen atoms of the benzene ring are equivalent. Therefore, only one monosubstituted product is possible. We do not have to identify the position of the substituent. So if I rotate the molecule, let me rotate it. we end up getting the same molecule no matter how I turn it. That means it is not important to which of the carbons the substituent has been attached to. As always, there are exceptions to this rule of naming. Some of the derivatives have common names which have been accepted into the IUPAC system, but they have no method of naming. They are important that's why they have to be learned, unfortunately. Let's look at some of them.